News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Blessings from Joe Biden tonight in the middle of Kamala's rally on the ellipse saying Trump's a fascist, January 6th, insurrection, threat to democracy. Joe comes and says, hold my beer, girly, and drops this one today. Or Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware, they're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is just supporters. We are garbage. And you know what else? We are going to lock people up and jail them. There are people, I mean, you're a journalist. You and I might be sharing a cell in, in you know, six months from now. And, you know, but people laugh it off. It's not funny. No, and they need right. to listen to what he's saying. And they need to realize this time that there's an apparatus around him that is more competent and more focused than 2016. Mm. Yeah, you, let, let me just accept the most charitable framing of this, which you just gave. Mm. Why is he sitting in front of a laptop at the exact same moment Kamala Harris is out on his backyard trying to give the closing argument to her campaign. What in the world is he doing? Now, I don't accept your framing of it personally because I actually do believe he, Harris, the Democratic Party, and most of their campaign do believe that half the country is garbage. They've also said people who go to Trump rallies are Nazis. And so it's pretty apparent the disdain with which they hold half of the country in. It's not true. Oh, it's not true. Oh, come on. Oh. Let's hear what Vivek says about this. Look, here's the October surprise. It just arrived. This is the basket of deplorables moment. That's what Hillary Clinton said in 16, the tanker campaign. Well, that's the Joe Biden, Kamala Harris moment right now. I am a little bit more cynical about this one, Sean, in the following way. It might look like Joe Biden's usual cognitive deficits kicked in. But the reality is we know his family is secretly probably rooting for Donald Trump, not Kamala Harris to win because they feel really vengeful. About- mm. Well, maybe that's true. Um, I don't know, but we're garbage. That's Kamala's closing message tonight. We are garbage and that Trump is a Nazi fascist, racist, uh, white supremacist, uh, threat to democracy, j 6 or blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Is that a winning message? Is this a winning message? Is it, is, it kind of, is it kind of a wafting scent that is so delicious and sweet you go to it like a fly? Attracted to some honey or some sugar or a hot dog outside of the barbecue? That is the winning message tonight. And uh, she highlights January 6th and then Joe Biden comes in with the alley-oop, you are trash. So what do you say? Um, you're garbage. That's what the message is tonight. And uh, Trump is a threat, Nazi, etc. Is this a winning message? Is this a winning message, do you think? Uh, you had uh, Karl Rove earlier today, and you also separately had independent pollster Frank Luntz saying, this is a bad closing message, but that's what she chose. This is her leadership. This is her judgment. And then Joe comes in and says, we're garbage. So is this going to work? And what side is happy and which side is not happy in the campaign? You know, which ones are the happy warriors and which ones are the... Well, I mean, I, I think that Kamala's one that's... Hookity boogity boogity. Hookity boogity boogity. Ah! Ah! Right? Behind that door is a monster. You must vote for us because he's a monster. Rawr. Trump is uh, emanating hope and a message... And details, and Kamala is a blank slate, and Trump is bad. What do you say tonight? Uh, Who's happy, who's not? Is this going to work? Is it a winning message? And um, uh, what are your top concerns? Uh, Maybe you have one, two, three top concerns, whatever it be. It might be one, might be three. What are they? And is one of them the fascist threat to democracy, Nazi stuff, or is it something else? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. We've got uh, three lines open. It's a first for the night. 800-288-WBAP. Let's go to Jeffrey in Colleyville. Jeffrey, hello. What's up, hello, WBAP? Chris. Hey. Hey, Chris. Huge fan, huge fan. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think um, the, the comment is I, I just absolutely couldn't believe it. I, you know, I think it's, it's a horrible comment. It's a horrible thing to say. 
shows their true face. I mean, they, these are, you know, hateful, hateful people. So I, I honestly, I think uh, Biden might be actually trying to trying to uh, sabotage Kamala. I mean, you know, they, they kind of pushed him out and, you know, he's kind of he he's still the president. But, uh, you know, I don't think he's uh, really happy about what happened. Mm. Yeah, this is amazing, huh? So is this uh, who's the happy side? Who's the happy? You know, uh, what oh, side's happy? For sure. yeah, isn't it, isn't that amazing? Sure. They're yeah. so dour and doom and gloom, aren't they? Isn't Kamala well, specifically? I mean, Trump. You know, they 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 want you feeling good. You know, you, you feel younger. You're more optimistic. It's 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 just the energy level is just a lot more, uh, just just better. Uh, than, than anything that Kamala is doing. It's just, I, I think they just, they know they're losing and it's just, it's just, yeah, I, I just really can't say much more about it. it it's just a horrible comment. Well, um, thank you. And I appreciate your call tonight, Jeffrey. My pleasure. Thank you, Chris. Thank Thanks you, brother. Me on. Oh, by the way, what's your top okay. issue? I forgot to get that from you. What's your top issue? Oh, yeah. My, issues? My top, a- my top issue is, is definitely inflation and then probably war with with Russia. I think, mm. uh, you know, that everything else is, you know, any economy. I, I, I just I work in real estate and I just I don't think the economy is is, you know, it's just kind of. No, um, kind of. We got a, uh, one of our major home uh, sellers tonight. Is it um, which one is it? Uh, there's only a couple of really big ones. Um, uh, it'll come back to me in a second, but uh, they have announced uh, they're one of the big ones here in DFW and throughout the country. And they announced tonight that they're uh, they're uh, scaling back their home building because of demand. And uh, I'll pull, I'll pull up. I'll pull it up in just a second here. But uh, anyways, yeah, they they announced that today. And um, that's from because what's going on with the high cost and because of the uh, interest rates with this inflation because of Joe and Kamala. So, yeah, um, that's probably not surprising to you, huh? Nope, it, it sure isn't. Uh, you know, these are trying times for sure. So. Yeah, I appreciate your call tonight, and thank you very much. All right, let's go to Tony, and thank you. Tony and Allen, WBAP, hello. Hello, Chris. I'm freaking out. When I heard that J.D. Vance was going to be on the most listened to talk show in America. In the world, thought, actually, in the world. Not even America, the world. Talk, land that. How did you get him on your show? No, I didn't get J.D. Vance on my show. He's going to be on uh, <laughs> the Joe Rogan pod. You stinker. You stinker. I am so gullible. Wait, what episode number is it? Yeah, it's episode number. I got to make up one that's not possible to find. Yeah, it's episode number blah, 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 blah. Hold on, wait. Yeah, it's episode number. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, yeah, I yeah. remember when you were like episode number 12, and I thought, okay, this isn't going to last that long. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you've been around. Hey, listen, my, my biggest concern is the media, because half of the population believes what the media says and remember when joe biden was getting covered by the media he was 50 50 with trump as soon as the as soon as the media finally told everybody what we already knew his numbers plummeted and remember when they were trying to get kamala off the ticket because she was dragging joe down now the media loves her they cover for her now in some places she's beating trump yeah, if we can just get them to tell the truth, we wouldn't have to. Well, we're not going to get them to tell the truth. But here's the here's the thing. Um, and by the way, Dr. Horton is the home builder I was mentioning the last uh, quote. The last caller they announced this. This came out today in the Dallas Morning News. Dr. Horton plunges as home builders say buyers are taking a pause. Thirty year mortgage rates uh, still have been climbing more recently. Um, so that's it. Dr. Horton, they're one of the big ones. They have they're slowing down, or if not stopping, some of their building because of that. So that's the effect of the Biden Kamala uh, economy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, listen, I appreciate your great call, Tony. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you, brother. All right. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. We have got somebody on from Australia. Crikey. Uh, that's Peter in Australia. And then we also have Mike in Grapevine, which I think is in Australia, too, isn't it? No? Hmm. Okay, uh, we have three lines open, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Biden says that we are garbage. Trump's uh, supporters are garbage tonight. 
And look at the headline on CNN at the bottom of the screen. There it says Biden, quote, uh, meant to condemn comedian, not supporters. Ha 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 ha! Okay. All right. 800-288-WBAP. Uh, can't wait to share this with you. Reagan pollster and speechwriter uh, says this feels an awful like a lot like uh, Carter and Reagan right now, a week before the election. Uh, and I'll explain what he says there next as well. On the Chris Crock Show at 1018 on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93. Three lines open 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. Or Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware, they're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Will you explicitly call him a fascist tonight? I think what's most important is recognizing that his approach is not in the best interest of America's prosperity or security. Will you say that this evening? That he's a fascist? I have said what I have to say, which is he is dangerous and unfit and increasingly unstable and unhinged, and the American people deserve better. Well, 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 is this a good message? Is it uh, a winning message? What side is happy in their closing uh, week here? The, the table's been set tonight. It's we are garbage. And uh, we are supporters of Nazis, fascists, and, and all that. And uh, that's the message. And we're going to put people in camps and jail them. So that's what uh, Congresswoman Dingell said today. And uh, that's what many Democrats are saying. And uh, that's what members of the press are saying. So is this a good message? Uh, is it a winning message? And uh, who's happy and who's not as far as Trump and Kamala? Which one's happier? Which one's not? And which one has that attractive uh, winning campaign in which one's all dour, sour, and doom and gloom. And are your top cons- what are your top concerns? Is it uh, a fascist, Nazi threat to democracy or something else? 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Three lines open. First, we go to... Um, uh, we're uh, quite in demand in uh, Australia, so that's why we in- enter... With uh, the didgeridoo, uh, the didgeridoo introduction from our many Australian fans, and here's Peter from Australia. Good day, Mike. Good day. How you going? Good. <laughs> What's going on, my friend from down under? Do you like the didgeridoo intro? Yeah, Is that offensive? Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Here he goes. A little more. A little more. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Listen, I just want to say I really enjoy your show. I think you're fantastic. Thank you. Um, look, I'm a conservative by nature, and I just um, I just want to wish you guys that uh, Donald Trump, you know, romps in. I, I, I'm not sure how, but um, but I don't understand, Chris, how uh, Kamala Harris, how she is, is um, can, and people can still vote for her in, in her track record of not answering questions and, and her hatred against Trump and, um, and the... Um, the Republicans, so I just don't get it. It's not a winning message, and 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 she has said over and over again, including in a, re, a, a new interview, that she there's nothing different she'll do from Joe. Mm, and that's and right. clearly, you've seen from afar that this that's not going well here. Things aren't going well. Well, it depends who you listen to over here. Uh, you listen to American radio, and and Trump's going to romp in. But you listen to Australian radio, and um, a lot of it's left, and they say it's a it's a it's a very marginal choice, and uh, Kamala Harris may win. So, but I, I tend to believe uh, you guys and, and what's happening over there more than what they tell us over here. You know, I got to be honest, and and um, when well, on the days when I think we're going to lose, uh, you know, my, it goes up and goes down with each day. Tonight is really bad for them, um, Democrats. This is this is really bad for Kamala. I mean, Joe literally stole the thunder and said, you're trash. I mean, it's just about as bad as it can get. And then her message is dark and dour. And um, what I've learned from the experts over the years, I shouldn't say that. What I've learned from people who I look up, who I not look up to, but I that I trust, um, you want to be the one with the winning message and you want to close with uh, positive joy. You know, you're on the winning team. People want to vote for somebody who's a winner. There's no question right now who is, you know, happy or joyful and who's nasty, jailed, internment camp, you know, uh, garbage. I mean, these are not attractive things. It, it's really it's really gutter stuff, Chris. And I just don't see how she can. You put her up against the rest of the, the leaders of the world and she would just 
she would just milk. She has no capability of of uh, standing up for Australia. Uh, sorry, I'm very Well, sorry. you guys are part of the five eyes, man. Uh, we share intelligence together. You're part of the five eyes. So we are very closely related. And we're, we're working on the AUKUS deal to get you submarines, nuclear submarines and everything. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we love you guys. We love you yeah. too. And if it wasn't so dang expensive, yeah. I'd be flying over to say hi to you. Because I want to go. <laughs> Other than the, having the seven of the most deadliest species or whatever they are in the world, spiders and, you know, all that other stuff and, and sn- snakes. But that's okay. Because uh, we love Australia uh, too, Peter. Yeah, they're, they're friendly guys. It's just some are really nasty. So you just stay away from those. That's right. The kangaroos will love you and the koala bears will love you as there well. There you go. You guys hate yeah. koala bears though, don't you? Like a nuisance over there, I've heard. Oh, no, no, they're very cuddly creatures, but they, they probably gouge your eyes. Did you know they have a lot of them have gonorrhea, like strains, massive strains of gonorrhea? I'm not kidding you. I read about that. <laughs> Crikey! Throw them some condoms, eh? All right, brother, thank you very much for your call, Peter, and bear with me on my horrible Australian accent. You have a wonderful day. Yeah, evening. Right, All right, brother, take care. Hug from America. To you, Chris. All right, God bless yeah. you, brother. Take care. Uh, Mike and Grapevine, WBAP, hello. What do you got? Okay, yeah, how you doing tonight? Um, hey, hey uh, listen, it's Mike uh, from Grapevine. How are you, brother? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Hey, listen, um, uh, I think um, I think Joe Biden is, uh, is you know, this has been said uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you, there's a reason why a couple of weeks ago that the um, uh, Biden, I mean, the Democratic Party told Joe Biden to stay away from the Kamala Harris campaign. I think Joe Biden is purposely trying to sabotage Kamala, you know, because Donald, if you listen to Donald Trump's rallies, he, he continues to say that, that Joe Biden is a very unhappy man, that Joe Biden, he was forced out. Yep. You know, Kamala didn't receive one vote, and, and it's not Joe Biden, he can't be happy with the way he was dismissed, uh, kicked out of the uh, Democratic Party for president in favor of Kamala, and you know, because he's made, he's made like two or three comments that's been very detrimental to her her run for president, such as Kamala was uh, was alongside him with every decision that he made, even though even though she said she wasn't. And then and then uh, and then this latest comment where he's yeah. calling uh, Trump supporters garbage. This is pretty bad, isn't it? I got to roll, but I got to roll, but that's pretty bad, isn't it, Mike? I mean, this is really bad tonight, isn't it, for them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just yeah, that's just all he did was was make anybody that was on the ropes to try to think about Trump decide to go ahead and vote for Donald Trump when Joe Biden did yeah, what he did. Tonight. Nobody wants to so, be on so, this. Uh, so, so congratulations, Joe Biden. And, and thank you for the votes, my friend. Amen. My call. Take care, Mike. God bless your brother. Raj and Irving, you are next. Oh, he disagrees with me. That's cool. We'll put you on right away. Coming up next, I promise. Plus your call at 800-288-9227. We've never had four lines open throughout the whole night tonight, and now there is. So chime in. Get in right now. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Stand by. You're going to hear Joe Biden say that all of us people that support and vote for Trump are garbage. And much more coming out on this tonight uh, in the Chris Crock Show and News Talk 820-WBAP, now on FM 933, 800-288-9227 is our number. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Let's listen to a set of, you got Hillary, then you got Biden tonight, then you got Tim Walls, and then you got Kamala back to back to back on what they think about Trump supporters in their own words. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. For Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware, they're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. You said uh, over the weekend, referring to it, there's a direct parallel to a big rally that happened in the mid-1930s at Madison Square Garden. Well, look, you were comparing that rally to a Nazi rally? Look, I'm comparing it to the hate that came out of this, and I think they confirmed that. You stand by that comparison, though, to a Nazi rally? Look, look, the rally, you saw it for yourself. I'll let the American public make the decision of what they saw. What about you, oh, though? So I know what I saw, and I'll just leave it at that. Do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yep. All right, that wait, hold on. She said, "Yes, I do." Yes, I do. All right, Don's a fascist, so we support him. Of course, we're fascists. Here's here she is tonight on the ellipse, channeling January sixth, threat to democracy, fascist, Nazi, insurrectionist, etc. Here she is tonight, while Joe Biden comes out and says, "Hey, by the way, hold my beer, Kamala, while you're talking." Trump supporters are garbage. Look, we know who Donald Trump is. He is the person who stood at this very... 
spot nearly four years ago and sent an armed mob to the United States Capitol to overturn the will of the people in a... Okay, and then here's this tonight. Apparently we're like uh, Nazis or Adolf Hitler with Trump here. And those who came before us, the patriots at Normandy and Selma, Seneca Falls and Stonewall, on farmlands and factory floors, they did not struggle, sacrifice, and lay down their lives only to see us cede our fundamental freedoms. They didn't do that only to see us submit to the will of another petty tyrant. These United States of America, we are not a vessel for the schemes of wannabe dictators. The United States of America is the greatest idea humanity ever devised. All right, there we go. So, um, and then Trump's closing message you continue to hear. And I want to ask you some questions here on this. Is this a winning message that we're garbage? Us people like myself and perhaps you supporting Donald J. Trump that we're garbage? Uh, That we're fascist, Nazis, Uh, Is that a winning message? And will it work? Um, What are your top concerns? Is it like fascist Nazi threat to democracy stuff? Is that one of them? Are there any ones? You know, what are your top concerns? Where where is that in the top concerns? And then who, which side looks like happy warrior and which side, which side is, is not? I think it's clear that uh, the message is doom and gloom from Kamala, her acolytes and Joe Biden, you know, and Boy, I I, uh, have never heard somebody that uh, is gurus on campaigns and pollsters ever say anything about that being a good way to close a message, let alone any message. Uh, Carl Rove said it was a big mistake to do this as her close and as her focus. And so did independent pollster on CNN. uh, What's his name? Uh, What is his name? Dang it. Uh, Frank Luntz. Uh, What about you? What do you think? What are your top issues? And and, uh, who's happy here and who's not on which campaign? And what do you think about this? Is it a winning message that Kamala and Joe are saying tonight? 800-288-WBAP. We have four lines open, which we haven't had for two and a half hours. 800-288-9227. Chime in right now. We'll get you right on. Raj Irving on News Talk. 20 WBAP. Let's go. You're on WBAP. Hello. Hello, Mr. Brock. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you, Raj. Yeah, I do think that uh, there is a very good chance that uh, Ms. Kamala Harris could become uh, the president. And the reason I say that is because there is uh, so many things that are being ignored here in this particular moment. One of them, most prominent one in my mind, is generalizing the patriotism. I think when Mr. Trump, with with all due respect, Mm -hmm. when they generalize the patriotism, they tend to think that in terms of what's inside the country, than the outside the country. Mm. But I do believe in American patriotism is more about to do in other countries rather than just in the United States of America, how which so, I do how love so? how, very dearly. How so in that regard? It's more about outside of the country. That's never heard yeah. of that before. Talk to me. What, what, is that, what, what, is yeah. that, what does that mean? How so? Yeah. Any country that is opposite to demo- democratic principles that's where the United States was present, has been present, has made a voice about it, has has been a very vocal support of democracy around the world. And this is the first time where we are saying that let's just vote only for inside the country rather than outside the country. So the democratic principles, the leadership of America, I, I'm an immigrant. I'm a proud immigrant, and I'm a proud American, I feel. Are you a legal immigrant? 
I'm a legal immigrant, yes. Okay, yeah. So that's a big difference, right? I mean, we shouldn't yes. confuse illegal with legal. I'm, well, I'm yep. glad you're here, regardless of whether you agree with me or not on my politics. I'm glad you're here. I want legal immigrants. So you're yep. saying, but I want to make sure I understand what you're saying because I'm a little unclear, I think. You're saying it, that you're not just a patriot if you're an American and you're concerned about America. You're a I patriot, believe, you're a patriot anywhere in the world good. if you are for freedom and democracy. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, I the problem is the, pa- the people outside of the country, America the only thing that's different. different, the only difference is that I would say is it matters here because you don't get to vote if you are outside of this country. Does that make sense? I do understand that. I do understand that. But what I'm saying, trying to uh, trying to really articulate here, mm-hmm. I probably am not doing it really well. But what I'm really trying to uh, articulate here is the democratic principles. When we do talk about democratic principles here, they do actually reflect across the world, not just within the within the United States. Yeah, the democratic principles are not solely American, but I, when, with regard to an election, I, to me, the only thing that matters is what's happening in our country. I don't care about the rest of the world if we can't feed our families, if we can't afford to live. Is that fair enough on that regard? That is fair enough, but at the same time, over the over the centuries, I would I hope you would agree that we have taken a a position of being the leader of the free world, that world. Uh-huh. So who do you who do you think is? I mean, who's got the winning message right now? You know that Trump supporters are garbage and that Trump's a fascist and your supporters are fascists and you know he's going to lock us up, put us in camps. Who seems happy right? Who's got the who's got the winning message right now? And who seems happy and which side seems not happy? Can I just take a moment to answer that question? Yeah. Okay. So there are basically two two types of personalities that are voting here. One who sees the reality as it is, which is what it is it in what is in it for my next four years, and then there are the other side, which is basically uh, going into a very kind of a utopian view or an idealistic from a definition of a democratic principles point of view. Depending on where you are, you would be either Republican or the Democratic in this particular moment of time. Isn't it possible to be a Democrat and vote for Trump? It is possible. I And it is also possible to be a Republican and vote for, uh, yes, for Ms. Kamala. It is. It is. Yep. So which side seems doom and gloom and which side seems you know, dour and which side seems more up- upbeat? There is a, there are two ways to think about it. In long term, I be, do believe that Republican uh, ideology at this moment seems doom and gloom. In the short term, it, it is Democratic principles that are looking very doom and gloom. I tell you, I don't. I I've been. Um, I listened to Trump for three hours on Joe Rogan. Do you know there's about fifty million? There's more than fifty million people have watched the three hour Joe Rogan Trump show. Yep. And there's do. no doom and gloom there. Did you catch it? It's not about doom and gloom here. It's about alienation. Okay, but it's wait, 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 wait. But about did, about did you did it's you did you catch alienation? Did you catch? I do actually do did. Just catch a lot of alienation of saying that, okay, this is a particular group within the country versus how we are going to position ourselves outside the world as a global leader. There is a difference here. Well, but we're not we're not concerned about us. Uh, You can't you I can't be concerned about my neighbors if my house is on fire. And right now, this house is on fire. I mean, people can't afford to pay their freaking bills, their groceries. People are working. um, uh, The the real income is negative under four years of Kamala. Real fast, real fast. Let me finish. Real income. Hold on, I want to finish. Hold on. Sir, sir, don't, don't interrupt me. I haven't interrupted you at all. We've been having a nice conversation. You're not letting me talk. The um, real income is down tremendously under uh, uh, Kamala and Joe for four years. Let me share with you what I have on that. It's it's very bad, unfortunately, for America. And it is, I have a nice little analysis here, if you, if you give me a second, on um, the real wages and how much they've been affected and how much they're down. I have an editorial from the Wall Street Journal. I'm trying to find it. I got it. My, you know, Rush had a stack of stuff. Here it is. Okay, um, you got um, 
Consumer prices have risen 26% faster than private sector wages. Paychecks now buy less than they did when Trump was last in office. Uh, private sector, real private sector wages today are 11.8% lower than they would have been in the Trump era economy if it continued for another four years. If you look at the cost of interest rates on a new car, auto insurance policy, owning a new car, uh, prices, financing, insurance, gasoline, home ownership, home and insurance, financing a home, natural gas utility, insurance for a home, annual cost of owning a new car and home is 70% more. It's 20 $21,375 higher. And so, Raj, my point is, I'm dying here. I mean, yeah. Raj, I'm making twenty one grand a year less than I did under uh, Trump. I don't want to live like this anymore, Raj. Correct. Correct. Is that I fair? To, I don't want to live like uh, yeah. this anymore. Is Absolutely. that fair? Is that fair? It's a very, yeah. fair, very fair question. But the only thing that I want to ask you is, mm. in the global pandemic that has happened, is there anything different you think that has happened with, compared with any developing country? Developed country, not developing country. Developed country. What that country? I'm sorry, I'm not, I didn't can't understand what you're saying. What country are you saying? A blank country? What? Developed. Developed country. country. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your question this on that again? Now that are, I understand you said developed. This is where we are globally here. I don't my care. Is, I don't care. My point is, I'm tired yeah. of paying for a war in Ukraine that is unwinnable. Correct. Okay. I'm tired the of being. Only, the uh, only way, the, I'm, I'm the tired only of way giving Iranians, um, Iranians money to kill Jews. I'm tired of that, and I'm yeah. tired of war in the Middle East because of fecklessness. Yeah. War in Ukraine yeah. because of fecklessness and a disaster in Afghanistan that started it all. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Last yeah. comment from you. I got to go. Go quickly. I'm sorry. No, no, it's not your fault. Those are those. those are, I'm sorry to take more time off you, but no, just real quick. All quick. the different topics here. As far as the economy is concerned. It has actually shrinked in terms of the inflation way more faster than any developed country in the world. And that is because of Kamala Harris yeah. and Joe Biden. Okay, what are you going to do then? Which way are you voting? And I got to let you go. I would be voting Democratic. What does that mean, Democratic? You're voting for Kamala? Yep. Okay. Well, listen, I, I, um, can I ask what your household income is per year, roughly? It's about any, any average income. What is that? That's about 200 plus. Oh, Raj. Raj, the average income in DFW is about 60,000. That's All why, right. that's why you, Raj, listen, here's what you, I'm not being negative on you, brother. You represent a different class than most people. And the people that are voting for Trump are that different class. See, $21,000 a year, God bless you with making two hundred. I'm not shaming you. I have friends that are worth multi, multi-millions of dollars that live right here in the Metroplex and give so much, but you don't hear about it because they don't tell people because that's how you're supposed to do it, you know, as a, as a good Christian. People don't have what you have. People have 60 grand a year for a family, 80 grand a year for a family. If they're lucky, 90 or 100, dude, you're making double or more. And I'm not knocking I you. Agree. We can't afford this. Raj, for 20 Twenty-one grand for us is like twelve grand for you, dude. We're buried, we're screwed, and and we don't give a frog's back. You know what about the, out there? We had no wars with Trump. We were proud of ourselves, and inflation and, and, and prices were low. The average house when you bought the home was seventeen hundred dollars a month for a mortgage. It's thirty three hundred. Raj, that's fine for you, but it ain't fine for us. I wish you the best, and let's keep talking on the air. Keep calling in. Thanks. All right, uh, your reaction next on the Chris Crock Show. This is what I think is they don't. I was talking about this with my son, and there's a family member I'm going to mention who's like Raj, and I'm going to tell you about that next. And plus, your call, uh, uh, your reaction to this eight hundred two eight eight WBAP Chris Crock Show News Talk eight twenty WBAP and. Now and FM in 93.3. Or Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware, they're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Mm. I talked with Governor Walls yesterday. Okay. He compared uh, Trump's rally on Sunday to that of one of the Nazi rallies in the 30s at Madison Square Garden. Do you compare that? Do you find that a similar comparison? Listen, this election is in seven days, and I think the American people have a very clear choice. All right, there we go. Uh, Raj disagrees. He loves Kamala, disagrees with me. We're called garbage tonight by Biden. And uh, Raj, and I'm not knocking him, but his median income, his income is about 200 grand or more, and I don't knock him. He thinks that the things are pretty good, and he's going to go vote for Kamala. I told my son today earlier, un unrelated to this, about the same kind of thing. I said, you know, it's like... Our um, one of our in-laws or our 
one of her relatives, I don't want to get too specific, uh, they're double income making probably 300 or more a year. And I don't begrudge them, but they have no idea. And that's my son. My son said that's exactly. He said, "Yeah, that's it," because he sees it too. I'm not knocking them. They totally vote the opposite. They vote like Raj does. You guys just don't see it, and that's okay. I'm not here to be rude. I'm sure to tell you we can't afford twenty one grand. Uh, Mike and Little Elm, you are on WBAP. Let's go. Is that it, Mike? Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Well, I'm I'm ready to talk yes, to you. I was just trying to. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just trying to figure out why we continue to allow this talk of a threat to democracy when we're actually not a democracy. Yeah, we're a constitutional I mean, republic. We're, we're yeah. A con- yeah. yeah, we're a constitutional republic, and we allow this speech to continue. I think be- to correct these people. Yeah, I think people are ignorant. I think that's why, and that's used as a no, line. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's used as a line, and um, I think they parody themselves. Go ahead. Yes. Well, what I'm afraid of is that if we continue this conversation, yeah. one day we will become a, a uh, democracy, yeah. which we are not. Our founding fathers specifically said that we are a constitutional republic. Tell us the difference real fast, then we got to go. Okay, so basically a constitutional republic is where the people choose, and a democracy is where the ruling class chooses. Well, Mike, okay, I appreciate it. We got to go. Thank you very much. All right, um, here we are. Coming up next in the Chris Croc Show, you're garbage. That's exactly what uh, Joe Biden said tonight. If you support Trump, you're garbage. That's it. And that's what Joe and, and the Democrats and Kamala have basically said. We're Nazis, we're fascists, etc. So today Joe says the truth out loud. We're garbage. And um, tell me, how's this going to affect their campaign? Is this a winning message? Don't miss it. We've been slammed all night. We're going to keep getting slammed with your great calls and your reaction. 800-288, and mine, of course, 800-288-9227 on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3.